The new Argentinian president means business. Natural gas prices in Europe are falling. Turkish senator receives a message from God. In a very unexpected way. The British get tough. In the biggest news of this week, the Chinese go social rating crazy. Welcome to another world's news as seen from Russia update. Howdy howdy friends, my name is Konstantin and... Welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian, me. And um, every Wednesday, I give you Russian take on important news. Let's jump straight into news number one. The first news of the past week comes from Iran. An Iranian Shia court has ordered the United States to pay compensation for the murder of General Soleimani. Well, general, um, the General Shia Court in Tehran, the capital of Iran, ordered the USA, um, as well as 41 American individuals and legal entities, companies, to pay $49,770,000,000 for the murder of the former commander of the al Qaeda Special Forces, Qasem Soleimani. They, the Americans, are you trembling yet? Now, why the Iranians do that? What gives them this right? Well, the last week, um, they made a joint statement with the Russian officials that from now and on, from then and on, they would hold responsible governments, companies, and individuals placing economic sanctions upon Russia or Iran responsible for the damages that such sanctions bring to these two countries. I know, it sounds totally crazy, so it's hard to understand at first, and I read it twice to understand. Let me translate you from English to English on an example. If a criminal commits a crime, let's say steals from a store, and he's caught by the police and sentenced to prison term by court, then this criminal turns around and says that the police and the court become responsible for the damages that conviction caused him. So the Russian-Iranian statement was just like that. But there's a difference between... Russian officials and the Iranian ones. The Iranians mean business. They issued a statement and the following week, just few short days after, they already demand $49 billion from the USA. And the Russians? Uh, they will mostly um, try to chew on their snot. Yes, it's a Russian saying, forever. And they won't do anything. All they can do is to come up with statements, loud statements. They walk the walk. Uh, I'm sorry, they talk the talk, but they never walk the walk. And the next news comes from Europe, where natural gas prices in the, Europe in the European Union are forecasted to drop to 350 American dollars per thousand cubic meters in the second quarter of this upcoming year, 2024 due to the large reserves in the storage facilities. That's what the expert analysis say. Folks, something isn't right here. It doesn't make any sense. How can the Europeans survive without Russian natural gas? Look what Russian government was telling us last year. Check this out. Gazprom made a video, a very long video, 40 seconds. Um, they were telling us in the video that Europe will freeze to death. And this video is called The Winter Will Be Cold and Long. I mean, check this out, good folks, you know. Clearly, you know, they're showing the European Union gas, Russian gas, of course. Plenty of Russian gas. The pipeline Nord Stream. Ooh, this uh, pumping stations. 
Mighty equipment, that's European by the way, not Russian. Oh, so much energy, so vast, you know. Yeah, like Russians have much renewable energies, right. Gas? Oh yeah, they have that. And now Europe, they turning off gas. Clear message to the Europeans. And check this out. Poor folks, that's their last winter. Because the winter will be long without Russian gas, very cold. Oh my goodness, you know. What are they gonna do with the Russian gas? All this wonderful European cities, oh. They're gonna freeze to death, right? And now, this 350 US dollars per cubic meter, that's cheap. That's much cheaper when Russia was supplying gas. And the Russian government wouldn't lie. I mean, Europe had to freeze, right? Russian government never lies, never happened before. What? What is wrong? What, what this, just two and two doesn't, you know, make four here in this picture. Hmm. Oh, I got it. It's the experts. They are from Morgan Stanley, and that's an American company. The evil satanic people. Bad. Very, very bad people. No talk of this gas situation anymore. Stop. Don't talk ever. Or get 15 years in Gulag. Whew. And the next news is also about natural gas and Europe. Gas supplies from Azerbaijan to the European Union uh, in all countries in the EU in 2023 will amount to about 12 billion cubic meters. Currently, European countries consume 50% of Azerbaijan's natural gas exports. Folks, until recently, that gas was supplied by Russia. That was Russian natural gas. Azerbaijan simply replaced it. <sighs> My comment, Russians. Double face palm. Uh, <laughs> the next news is from Switzerland. The Swiss banks have started charging fees on frozen assets of Russian clients. According to the bankers, it doesn't matter whether the customers can accept their accounts, uh, access their accounts or not, accept their money or not. The accounts exist anyway, and the banks provide financial services which must be paid for. Um, you know what? I actually like this initiative. I am sure that the Swiss bankers would never freeze money that's transparent and legal and clean, so to speak, they only do so for the, the money they don't understand where they came from, for the Russian money in question. So that might, makes very much sense to continue paying for the accounts. If only everyone would follow Swiss bankers' logic. And the next news is, believe it or not, religious. It actually is quite the news. <laughs> God Almighty gave the humanity yet another proof that he exists. And it happened in Turkey, actually in the very heart of Turkey, <laughs> on the stage of the Turkish parliament in the city, in the capital city of Ankara. A Turkish senator was making a speech uh, for a couple minutes saying that Allah would punish all those who support Israel. Right after he finished you know, still standing on stage, he immediately had a heart attack. He fell down. Well, he was punished, all right. He was resuscitated right in the parliament on the floor, and now he's in intensive care. Things aren't looking well for him. Well, <laughs> now that's what you call an instant answer. <laughs> what else do you need as an evidence? <laughs> Um, the next 
news comes from the United Kingdom. You know, in Russia, somehow there are lots of people that are absolutely delusional. They, 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 they say things that are, well, delusional. I've heard so many people say something like, uh, oh, wait till the war is over. The next day, the sanctions will be lifted and all the Western companies, they will come back and they will start selling their goods and services in Russia. Immediately, the next day after that happens, the war stops. Well, to me, folks, that's absolutely delusional. But what do I know? This crazy guy sitting in Uzbekistan far away somewhere... Ah, ha, ha, not so fast. The UK is not going to lift anti-Russian sanctions even after the end of hostilities on the territory of Ukraine. This was stated by the country's deputy minister for business and trade, Mr. Ghani, during the speech in London. Now, the English. Um, you are the first ones to prove me right. Oh, Konstantin is not crazy after all. He knows what he's talking about. Thank you, the United Kingdom. You've given the world culture, great language that I am speaking right now, and wonderful English tea. And now you have proved me right. You are officially awesome. Thank you. Um, you know, don't miss the next news because it spells trouble uh, for all of us. It's not a joke and I'm serious. Uh, actually, three following news, and they all come from China. First news is um, um, how do I say that? Troubling. For the first time since the year 2000, foreign investments in China dropped to negative territory at the end of the quarter. Uh, it's right there. Third quarter, 23 minus 12 billion. As you see at this graph, has not happened before. Um, also, the consumer price index in China fell by 0.5% year to year. Deflation is caused by a sharp drop in demand and deterioration of consumer expectations and may be a sign of an impending crisis in country's economy. And the third news, for the first time since 1989, that's a long time, Moody's downgraded the outlook on China's credit rating from stable to negative. The reason given was... The growing debt and China's activation of fiscal incentives for economic growth. It means that Chinese government starts artificially helping businesses. Okay, and this 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 stuff is um, carries serious risks. Um, any economist will tell you that, folks. This means that the Chinese economy, the powerhouse that was driving an enormous economic growth in the last 25 years is slowing down. The global economy will follow soon. It'll be cooling. Not much we can do about China. Man, just be aware. And the next news come from Argentina. Argentinian president means business. He might be a controversial fella, but he means business. Check this out. He won the elections, he was sworn the Argentinian president, and by his first decree, he reduced the number of ministries in the country by half. He was true to his word. Getting rid of unnecessary government offices and departments was his election promise, one of them. <laughs> You know, I think if I became the Russian president, I'd do the very similar thing. I'd fire thousands of useless bureaucrats and have the government immediately. <laughs> by the way, if you're liking today's news update, please help me spread it by making reposts in your social media accounts. That helps a lot. Thank you so very much. 
The next news also comes from Turkey. The country has tightened the rules for the import of electric vehicles from China. Starting next year, importers of Chinese electric cars will have stricter requirements. They'll have to have at least 140 authorized service stations, even um, evenly distributed throughout the country, all 140 of them, in a separate call center for each car manufacturer. These requirements are so strict that currently not one single importer um, fulfills them. The experts believe that Turkey went to introduce such regulation after European Union countries launched a large-scale investigation into China's violation of fair competition laws by providing huge subsidies to its electric car manufacturers. Due to that, any other brands of electric cars in, um, in the market of budget and middle-priced uh, cars uh, segments, they have become uncompetitive. The European Union believes that this way China wants to capture the maximum possible market share and bankrupt the competition. Then the Chinese will begin to dictate their terms, plain and simple. I also think that uh, the Turkish are looking at what's happening in Russia right now, and they're getting scared. In Russia, the Chinese own over 90% of Russian new car market. And at this point, they can do anything they want with it. The prices for Chinese cars are skyrocketing and neither government nor consumers can do anything about it. Because, you know, what can you do? The 90% share of the market. And the Turkish, they don't want the fate, uh, the same fate for Turkey. And that's pretty smart. Good for you, the Turks. The next news is about global markets, really. Check this out. Um... This, um, this, um, this is a picture of the decline of uh, the USA and Japan and the dawn of China as the manufacturers of electronics. Take a good look at it. This is how the top 10 leading global electronics exporters have changed in 23 years. The USA was number one, now China. Folks, if at this point you're asking yourself, how can I help this channel? It's very easy. First of all, you can hit the like button. Believe it or not, helps a lot. Or you can buy me coffee at buymecoffee.com or become a Patreon at patreon.com. Either way would be absolutely fantastic and much appreciated. The links are down below. Thank you so very much. The next news is um, from half Russia, half Georgia, half Armenia. Well, third Russia, third Georgia, third Armenia. Folks, do you know how many Russians have fled the country recently, in the recent couple years? According to some experts, around 3 million people. They came to different countries, including Uzbekistan, where I am right now, but hands down Georgia and Armenia among the leaders in hosting Russian emigres. And the Russians, you know, they don't come empty-handed. Armenia has entered the top 10 fastest-growing economies in 2023. This result was largely achieved due to a large number of Russians who moved to the country. They started doing business there, they started making a living, and they brought lots of money with them from Russia, invested into Armenia. And in Georgia... And I, I just um, let me tell you that Georgia has 
very liberal uh, legislation for people who open small businesses there. They pay low taxes, and Georgian government uh, does wonderful things promoting small businesses there. So in Georgia, since February 2022, Russians have registered 1,550 companies, and another 25,689 people have received the status of an individual interp uh, entrepreneur, similar to limited liability company. Well, someone's loss is someone's gain. And the next news comes from the United States of America. And <laughs> I don't quite understand <laughs> how to comment it. Let's just, just watch it, you know. from a terry towel uh, fox i i again uh, towel like that or a few are in my bathroom you know and then i uh, <laughs> what the hell 945 dollars for that Ooh, only in america um the last news of the week happened in china again China again. China is the, quite the newsmaker this week. And this news is a warning to all of us. It is to be taken very seriously. A non-government service, means a private company, has appeared in Chinese WeChat Messenger. Okay? That service allows you to see people with low social ratings nearby. Check this out. <laughs> WeChat is uh, a large messenger, the only messenger. It's controlled by the Chinese government, monitored and everything. And now there's a service that allows you to locate people um, that have slow social rating right next to you. I mean, this is this is this is sinister. I I, I don't. According to the service creators, their product is useful for the Chinese to understand that it's not worth communicating, doing business with this person, using his services, and responding to his requests. Because he has social low social rating. On top of that, uh, communications with such a citizen can lower your rating. You know, the ones who communicate with such citizen. Folks, this is, I don't know how about you, but this is scary. This is straight out of um, Black Mirror movies. Um, what this Chinese company is doing, it's isolating good people from the society just because they have low social rating. And it's not like people are bad, it's just they might protest against the government or something like that. That's why their rating gets lowered. But the Chinese people, law-abiding people who uh, are suppressed by the government, they actually make a conscious decision not to communicate with low social rating people. You know, this is, this is crazy. And it's not the government that forces them. The government just conditions, engineers this environment. Now, watch out. We say, oh, it might happen in our country. Okay, I've heard that before. But it's already happened in China. It's already there. It's happening. I think that Russia will follow next. And then, who the hell knows? This crazy world, we can expect anything. Folks, just have one thing to say to you. Don't let them take away your freedom. Don't let it happen. Ugh. And that's it for the 
for today's world news update. I suggest now you check out another video I made documenting how I was leaving Russia. And it's right here. I'll see you soon.